All right, now we're going to take a look at how to get GNS3 so you can use it for your network simulations. Just go to www.gns3.com and right in the home page here you're going to see a, a button for a free download of the GNS3 software. You're going to put in your information and create an account and continue. Once you continue and you download the GNS3 software, we're going to launch the application. And here's what it looks like. It's going to ask you if you want to just make a new project or maybe if you had a recently created project, you could open that. Let's make a new one here and we'll call it GNS3 Lab. Hit OK. So here we are. Now we have our GNS3 topology ready to build. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download some specific images that we're going to need to use to populate our devices. So we can create routers and use some existing devices within GNS3 like ASA firewalls, an actual layer 2 switch, but first you need specific images to create those devices. If you go back to the main page for this course where all of the videos are, under the GNS3 section you'll see some links that I put in here. These links have the information that you'll need to number one install the different types of devices that we're going to cover here from the layer to switch. I even have a link here to get an iOS, iOS image that will be required for setting up routers and even a, a bonus link here to show you how to set up an ASA in GNS3. So I would say before you continue on, follow these links, get the required images that you'll need to download and have the documentation ready to follow. And just so you know, some of these images, they're, they can be hard to find because for example, like the Cisco iOS router image, I have a valid Cisco login. I have those images, so it's not as big of an issue for me to get an image to use with GNS3, but maybe you don't have that luxury and you kind of have to dig around to find images for some of the GNS3 stuff, but just the documentation is really good out there. So if you have any trouble with finding the images through these links or anything, just message me or something, but just do some research. And I, I found out how to build these just by, you know, how to build an ASA in GNS3 and there's really good documentation out there. So just rely on that and you'll be all set. Once you have your images downloaded, you can build your devices. So let's start with the most basic. Let's start with a router. A router, to build one of those bad boys, we're going to go to Edit and then Preferences. And you can see the different options you have here. We're going to click on iOS Routers and we're going to make a new one. I already have some built, but I want to show you the, the whole process here. So we'll say New. And then I have to select my image that I previously downloaded. And before I do that, you'll see, I guess I have to show you after this part, but you'll see that there's specific router platforms that you're limited to in GNS3. So like 7200s are the most stable to me. So just know that you're going to need to match your image to the router that you're creating in GNS3. But just stick with 7200s. They're the the best as far as bugginess and and performance goes. So I've selected my image. I'm going to say next, and then here you can see, like I mentioned, you only have certain platforms to choose from. Let's call this Lab 7200 Platform 7200. Next, it's going to allocate some RAM to the device, I just let it use the default. And then you can pick to add network adapters. So I would add a few in here just so you're not limited on your network interfaces for the router. 
And then you have to create an idle PC value, which is used to prevent CPU usage on your device. So, so the router doesn't use up all of your CPU. You're going to want to create a idle PC value here. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, our idle PC value has been created. We're gonna hit OK, and then finish. Apply, OK. So now, when we click on the router icon on our GNS3 page here, we see that the router we just created is available. We're gonna left click on it, drag and drop it onto the screen. Let's say we're gonna use three routers in the topology. Let's add three more. Then we're gonna connect them with this connection option here and you're just gonna left click and choose which interfaces you want to use for the connections and then you can see that everything's red on these links here well we, we need to start the router so click on the link connection there so you don't have the, the link selected anymore and you can either right click on the individual devices and start them but I usually just wait till I have my topology built and I come up here and this play button will start all of the devices at the same time and then once they're started you need to counsel into them so you can configure them you can either right click and counsel again or just go up here and this will open up a counsel connection to all devices so there you go it was that simple now I'm into my device and I'm ready to configure my routers. If you show IP interface brief, see the interfaces that we have available to us, and it's just like you're in a real Cisco router. So that's routers. Now if we continue on here, select this device button here, you see the different devices that are available to us. You can also build a Cisco ASA. Like I said, I have a link for the process to do that, but I'll show you where you go for those images. So basically, you come in here. I'll just I'll act like we're creating one from scratch. So you're gonna say new. You'll say ASA 8.4.2. Name it ASA. Whatever. And then you're gonna have to choose your. KEMU executable image that you downloaded, your binary image that you downloaded after you followed the link that had the instructions. Click next and then you're going to have to install these Linux, Linux boot options here which are also images that you're going to download as part of that process. So you just select wherever you installed those and click finish. Mine's not going to finish because I guess I can go through the process here. I think it's actually just those two images that you download. This one I think is, yeah, that one's like a canned image that comes with the GNS3 download. So just make sure you, you pick that key, uh, QEMU executable for this binary option. And then you go and you browse to the images that you previously downloaded and then you say finish and then you're good to go apply OK and you can throw your ASA on there, ASA on there. you gotta start it and just like that we have a Cisco ASA booting up love we'll that boot while that's going Next is the coolest thing that it took me a long time to finally do this, but in GNS3 for a long time, most people just used it for router connectivity. You were limited as far as layer two switches go, but now you can actually create a layer two switch and I'll show you the process for that. It's deceiving if you use the ethernet switch you can't console into it or anything. All you can do is get this GUI configuration. If you want to, you know, set a VLAN tag on a specific port, then you can come in here, add it, and then if you connect something to that port, and I'll show you what I mean. So I just configured port 9 as a trunk. 
or not sure which port I configured there, but so now I just connected on port eight. If I wanted to modify that port, I have to come in here and say, okay, I want to make that a, a a tag for VLAN two or something. It's kind of hokey, but I mean, if you want to just connect a bunch of devices, like a, I look at it as just a it's a dumb switch basically. But if you wanted to create a real Cisco switch, follow the link in under the GNS3 video description on the Udemy course page. And you can go edit preferences, just like we did with the ASA. And let me see what I did here. So I chose it looks like this oh it's a different binary so let's go through this process so okay so we want to do an iOS layer 2 switch oh and by the way to do the ASA and the iOS switch you have to have a certain version of GNS3 I can show you what I'm running here real quick now let me cancel out here before I forget about so I'm running 13.11 so I know at least in that version you can do what I'm showing you just be aware of that. You might have to upgrade if you already have GNS3 to do some of these other things. So go back to the switch process, go to QEMU VMs. And that was the, okay, I'm gonna say new iOS image. Oh, it's actually asking me for my name here. So let's do lab and then According to what I had set up, you want to choose this 8664, or I think it was this one actually. Let's see. Yeah, I think it was this system. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure I was showing you the right binary to choose there. Let's try this one more time. Can't tell the difference between. Yeah, I think it was this one. Yep. So choose the system 8664 executable RAM. Can be the default. And then you have to browse to the iOS L2 image that you downloaded from the link that I shared with you earlier. And you're going to select that. Hit finish. And then we should in theory have a layer 2 iOS switch to use. So let's find that switch. Let's drag it onto the screen here. While the switch is booting, we'll go back to our ASA here to prove that we do, in fact, have a Cisco firewall running in GNS3. The default login is just enable and then hit enter, so there's nothing for the password. In fact, I can exit, and I'll show you again. So I just did enable, enter, and then enter. And then you're logged in. Show interface. It's backwards in the Cisco ASA. Cisco interface IP brief instead of show... IP interface brief and we're ready to configure our firewall. We'll say this is going to be our outside interface. Then we'll make our inside interface. You can see it's setting the default security levels. You'll understand that later on in this course when we go over firewalls. Then we'll make our DMZ interface. We'll make that security level 50. Then we can configure our IP addresses on the interfaces and we're good to go. And then you connect it just like you would anything else. So go here, say we want. Oh, so apparently you have to stop the firewall before you can connect things to it. 
Got my firewall connected. We'll start that back up again. We'll start everything actually. Then we have our awesome iOS layer 2 switch here that will connect. Not sure if it'll let me connect it when it's running. I'm going to connect it because it takes a little bit to boot and I think it finally booted up here. It takes a really long time for this to boot. I think I'll pause the video and then we'll come back to it. Okay, our switch finally booted here. To get to the privilege prompt, you're just going to say enable then enter. Some of this might make more sense later on in the course when we go over how to configure devices and how to manage their command line. So if I'm running some commands here just to kind of give you a quick view of what the device looks like and you're not familiar don't worry we're going to cover it later in the course I just wanted to show you what you're gonna get here so now we have an actual layer 2 switch running in our GNS3 lab so what more can you ask for you have a layer 2 switch Cisco firewall all the routers that your computer can handle <laughs> you'll know it your fans gonna be cruising when you <laughs> start adding devices to your topology but that's okay so now I can tell that I haven't saved my topology because I have this asterisk here up by the the name so I'm gonna control s and save the topology before I finish and I can stop all my devices close this out and then open it back up if I want to to reuse this topology to configure all of my CCNA configurations.